Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, I had a subscriber ask a question, which I'll flip in here, and he was basically wanting to know if I could talk about uh, myostatin and how it relates to muscle growth and uh, what you could do about myostatin personally. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing. Let's do a little bit of crafting and let's talk about it. All right, this one, I'm gonna just this one time, I'm not doing this often anymore because I'm finding people take my cliff notes and they assume that that's everything I have to say and they quote me on stuff and the cliff notes are actually getting it interpreted incorrectly. Uh, but short story, uh, you shouldn't worry about myostatin. If you were unlucky enough to be born uh, with your myostatin inhibited, you're going to be massive without ever lifting a weight and you're probably going to die really young and suffer, suffer a lot of health problems. Uh, any product trying to inhibit myostatin is a fucking con and the people who are selling it should be probably charged with fraud and be thrown in prison. Now, a little further details. Myostatin. Uh, myostatin is what your body uses to inhibit muscle growth. Why is this important? Why do we develop this? A lot of people would look at that and say, hey, well, that sucks. Uh, we should just all be naturally muscular without having to work for it. Why in the world would your body have that? What's the benefit? Uh, it's to keep you from starving to death. Because we live in an era of plenty. Many of us live in first world countries. Uh, we can't envision a world to where you might go a week without eating. That's just completely foreign to us. Uh, we can't imagine what it's like for the last several hundred thousand years uh, for all hominids and primates. They oftentimes starve to death. Um, and you know what? You starve to death based upon your metabolism. Gaining excessive amounts of muscle mass that you absolutely do not need uh, to keep your body from being injured uh, will cause you to starve to death in famine type situations or any time period where food gets uh, shorted. So we have myostatin there so that your body only gains muscle when it has to. Your body will only gain muscle when it is at risk of injury from not gaining muscle. Meaning you chronically load muscles and connected tissue uh, with workloads that they can't really handle. Your body adapts to that by thickening them up so that they don't tear. It doesn't want them to tear and rip because torn muscles uh, can get you killed if you're in survival situations. If you don't live in the modern medical world with people to help take care of you and everything else, and you actually all through history had to go out and just hunt your food um, and find food every day, uh, torn muscles could cause you to die. It could cause you to not be able to get out of survival situations. Torn muscles are bad, so your body thickens up muscles to keep them from tearing. Of course, that it makes you stronger as well because you're not only resistant to um, handling the workloads without tearing, you can lift more workloads. And so we know that months and months or years and years of progressive overload is what causes muscles to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Your body has to do that. You're forcing it to. Myostatin is there to limit the amount of muscle that you gain. It's to keep you from gaining muscle that you haven't earned, that your body doesn't feel a need that you have to have it to keep from injuring yourself and therefore stay alive. What we have found, and we've discovered this because we've had certain animals mutate to be born with a myostatin deficiency. They might have some, but they don't have enough. That's where you see things like these Belgian blue bulls, uh, these myostatin deficient dogs. This stuff is really easy to find if you guys want to know what they look like. They look like that without steroids, without drugs. And these animals are massive, they're ripped, and they look like basically bodybuilder cows and bodybuilder dogs. Um, the problem that we run into, uh, people, started trying to make products that they claimed inhibited myostatin. The first one was like a big pond algae. This algae we found in a pond. We found this algae in a pond. It inhibits myostatin. We only charge $100 a bottle for this pond scum. And you know what? Tens of thousands of dumbasses bought it when they said that. Turned out it didn't work. And then other myostatin inhibitors have come out. And at the end of the day, myostatin inhibitors are just a hustle by the supplement industry to take your hard-earned money for a bullshit product that doesn't do what they claim it does. It's gonna change your genes and uh, block all this myostatin in your body even though it's something your body really, really wants to have and only people who don't produce it are people with a serious genetic mutation. But yeah, we found a way to block it. No, they didn't, guys. They've not found, even medical doctors haven't found ways to block it in humans. And even if they did, it would be illegal to give it to you. Why? Because it's dangerous. Um, we have already suspected that things like myostatin inhibition in humans could cause things like major heart defects and all sorts of problems. Having inhibited myostatin could potentially kill you. So guess what? The only safe way 
uh, to really gain muscle is going to be to actually work for it. In fact, um, when it comes to even things like anabolics, given a choice, if they were to create a drug that would inhibit myostatin because we don't know the long-term risk and dangers, we have a lot of suspected ones, people would still, from a safety perspective, be better off going with the drugs that we've tested, that we've developed for humans, and that we know what to expect. We know what the risks are. All right, you know what the health risks are from taking a bunch of testosterone or a bunch of nandrolone. Uh, there's studies on it. We have an idea of what happens. We've seen the effects, prolonged effects in people. We know what those risks are. We know how to safely assess those risks in the modern world. Um, to step back and say, if I use this substance, this is the possibility of what could happen to me. This is probably about the chance of maybe, you know, one in five chance I'm going to have this problem. Uh, it'll go up if I use more of it, the chance. I'm more likely to have more problems the more I use. This is already understood. We know kind of what the risks are. We know how to adjust our lifestyles to work around that. How do you lower the risk? Uh, you know, your diet and lifestyle can lower those risks. With myostatin inhibition, um, because it's so new, and we know that this is a mutation that can cause health problems um, in various animals who are born with this mutation. Remember, most mutations are fatal in species. Only like less than 1% of mutations actually turn out to be beneficial. Uh, so with something like this, it probably isn't going to be beneficial for us to have it. It's going to allow you to have more muscle, but it could kill you really young. So the issue we run into here, we have something like this that we don't know how to assess the danger, particularly the long-term risks of it, the same thing, the same way that we do with things that already exist. So even if someone came up with a way to do this and they created a drug to inhibit it, because we don't understand the drug, we don't understand the effects, it would be really, really stupid for you to experiment on yourself when you already have other substances that will still make you massive and muscular, um, that we already know how to at least assess the dangers of. They've been tested in humans for generations now. We kind of know what to expect versus some new drug that for all you know could kill you three years from now. Five years from now, you could drop dead as a result of taking it uh, so that you can gain 20 pounds of muscle. Uh, it's just insane to mess with stuff like that. And so this whole idea that people say, oh, I wish I had something to inhibit that, that myostat, and I would be so lucky if I was born that way. Guys, that is sheer stupidity of bodybuilders. I mean, again, you have something like that that potentially has problems. In fact, um, it's my understanding that a lot of the people we have found who have some problems with myostatin inhibition are actually in physical pain all the time. Uh, it's actually, again, this is a mutation. It's problematic. Yes, they gain muscle really easy. Yes, they gain muscle without working out, but they're also uh, in constant pain. Like the people that we have found who have this, yeah, they have twice the muscle they should have, but they get muscle cramps, intense muscle cramps and stuff every single day, and it's actually a painful condition to have. Like, so anyone who says, oh man, I wish I could get an extra 20 pounds of muscle without working out and just to have to deal with pain, physical pain and cramps every day, those people are so lucky. If you honestly think that way, then you're a fucking idiot. No offense, but you're a fucking idiot if you actually see those people as lucky. Uh, they have a painful medical condition that's very possibly gonna kill them young that causes them physical pain, fairly intense physical pain, seven days a week. In fact, children who have it, they have to do special stretching and everything because they can stove up and have trouble moving due to all the muscle cramps. So the idea that they're lucky basically makes you a fucking moron. And on top of that, uh, people then see all these things and think, man, I wish that we could make a drug to do this. You want to make a drug that will give you a painful medical condition that might kill you young uh, so that you can gain 20 pounds of muscle. Seriously, guys, think about it. But no, really, think about that. There are people out there who hear about people who have a medical condition. A medical condition that gives them free muscle mass, free muscle mass. They don't have to lift weights. And in exchange for it, they're going to die young and they have to deal with physical pain. Most of them do. Physical pain their entire life, starting with their early childhood all the way until the day they die. They still have to do extra stretching and everything to try to get the pain and the muscle cramps reduced down. And they go through all of this. That's actually far worse than the pain you're going to get from lifting weights. Um, they go through all of this, but they have twice the muscle mass they're supposed to have as the benefit. And people actually see this as a good thing, and they want to replicate this in their own body. They want to inhibit something in their body that is absolutely there for a positive reason, 
result of millions of years of evolution and removing it seems to be a painful and uh, dangerous medical condition for humans to have. But because it gives them free muscle mass that they don't have to lift weights for, it's totally awesome and worth it. You know what? And actually, I'm not going to call the people thinking that dumbasses. I'm just going to say they're, they're probably just ignorant. They haven't actually thought it through. They just say, oh, wow, myostatin inhibition free muscle mass. And they don't know the rest of it because they haven't looked into it very far. And you know what? Those are the very people who are at risk of being conned and scammed by these fucking supplement companies. People who can't be bothered to do their research, who just hear this stuff and think that's awesome. And then as soon as one of these companies come along, uh, they're going to buy this pond scum from these companies for $100. Remember, guys, if it sounds too good to be true, uh, particularly coming from a supplement company, it's pretty much a 100% chance it is too good to be true. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.